So in the last few videos, we looked at parameterized functions, functions that take data in and do something with that data. Well, now we're ready to start talking about functions that not only do that, perhaps, but also give something back or return a value, as we say. Um, we looked at the jukebox function in the last, uh, the last video. And if you think about the way a jukebox operates in real life, you go up to the box, you put money in, you select your songs, and then you walk away with nothing in your hands. You just go and you wait for your, to hear your songs. Contrast that with a vending machine. A vending machine, you put the, you know, the, the, the input is similar. You put the money in, you put the code in, but then what happens? You receive something from that machine. You walk away with a bag of chips in your hands or something else in your hands. So let's, um, let's write a function that will mimic a vending machine. That'll be a good way to think about return values, functions that give something back. So here's a scenario. Uh, we'll say that everything, we'll just keep it simple. There are three items for sale in this vending machine. They all cost $1.25. We've got, here are the codes. <coughs> A1 will be the Doritos. A2 are the potato chips. C3 are the Pop-Tarts. And uh, let's um, look at the prototype here. Okay, so this is the return type. In all of the functions that we've done so far, it was always void here. Void meaning nothing. That has changed. This function is going to return a value. It's going to give us back a string, a string like Doritos or potato chips or whatever. So I put the return type as string. I'm calling my function vending machine. And uh, we have the parameters, a float to represent the money, a string to represent the code, A1, A2, whatever, All right, which I'm calling selection. So that is my prototype. I copied that, I pasted it down below without the semicolon here, and now this is the definition. I'm just using an if-else. Um, basically, oh, well, okay, right off the bat here, I've created a string inside my function. I've initialized it to nothing, like an empty string. And then I'm saying if the money is equal to $1.25, they've inserted the correct change, then but, well, I have a nested if here. If it's the correct change, okay, let's drill down into the selections. If it was A1, then that's the Doritos. If it's A2, it's the potato chips and so on. So we have a nested if there. Or else they didn't insert the correct change, and this is what I'm going to put into that string. So the string is called purchase item. All right, and so as I'm in my if statement, if it was A1, the purchase item is going to take on the value Doritos and so on. Okay. If they didn't put in the correct change, I'm putting please insert correct change into the purchase item variable. So now we get to the return statement. And you, you have to have this. You have to have this. When you say that your function is going to return a value, if you have anything other than the word void right here, you've got to have a return statement. You've got to pass something back. So I'm, I'm returning the purchase item. And I'm basically returning it to the place where this function is called. So I'm in this case, I'm calling the, I'm going to call the function from main. We'll go up there in a moment. But this purchase item, whatever's in there, Doritos, potato chips, that's going to be returned up to main. It's going to return, be returned to main. Just to prove a point here, if I comment this out, the compiler is going to complain. Oh, I don't have a, uh, an angry red line here, but if I try to build my program, I'm going to get a um, an error for sure. Okay. Oh, I don't know. That wasn't the error I was expecting. But in any case, um, I cannot proceed until I have my return statements. So functions that return values are going to have return statements. There's no way around it. So let's go up to main. Okay, so... Uh, Here's, I'm starting off by telling you what not to do. This is how not to call a function that returns a value. In the past programs, when, uh, in the past, past few videos where we were not returning values from functions, this was fine. Just having the function call on its own line, passing the arguments to the parameters, that worked just fine. It's not going to work well here. Um, this will call the function. 
It's going to select the potato chips or whatever. Um, but what's going to happen is those potato chips are going to come back to Maine, and I'm not doing anything with them. They're just going to like go, fall into a black hole, never to be seen again. Okay, so this is not how you call a function that returns a value. You're not going to have just the function call hanging out on its own line. Instead, it's going to be part of a larger statement. So, for example, here the function call is part of a larger code statement. In this case, a variable assignment statement. I'm creating a string variable, I'm calling it my lunch, and I'm saying, okay, whatever I get back from the vending machine is going to go into my lunch, and then I'll print my lunch. Okay, so now I, like, I'm capturing that value. I'm, I'm capturing those potato chips, and I'm printing them out at the console. I'm putting them into a variable, then printing that variable value at the console. Um, so that's one way of calling a function that returns a value. Here's an, another way you can do it is just drop that function call right into the output stream. Uh, so in this case, I'm getting the Pop-Tarts, and those Pop-Tarts are just going to be dropped right into the output stream, and it's going to say, here are your Pop-Tarts, enjoy. And um, so, but in any case, it's the function call is part of a larger statement, and that is how you have to do it when a function call returns a value. Okay, you're not going to have this where it's just hanging out by itself. That's not going to help anyone. Again, it will call the function, and you're going to get your thing back, but your thing is just going to poof disappear into nothing. So, um, yeah, that that's a that's an important point here that you have to keep in the back of your mind.